No, my meeting's starting. I got to go on camera. Why, what's up? Andy, can you please mute, mute your microphone? Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Wilmot Council. We will begin with a moment of silent reflection. Thank you. Councilor Gordick, if you would read the land acknowledgement, please. Good morning. We have gathered in Wilmot Township on the traditional territory of the Neutral, Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and Mississauga peoples. We also want to acknowledge the importance of the Dish with One Spoon Covenant, a peace agreement made between Indigenous nations before the Europeans arrived. It characterizes our collective responsibility to each other and Mother Earth. We should take only what we need, leave enough for others, and keep the dish clean. By acknowledging this covenant and the First Nations, Métis and Inuit peoples, we are reminded of our important connection to this land where we live, learn, and work together as a community. Thank you, Councilor Gordick. Is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest under the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act? Seeing none. So the purpose of this meeting this morning is for me to uh, read the following statement. To my colleagues on Wilmont Council, the constituents that we serve and the greater community, I have been ignorant and am incredibly sorry for my actions. Upon reflection of the recent post that I made on social media and the ongoing justification for my actions, I know now that this was truly a significant error in judgment. I would never in any way want to diminish discussions surrounding the importance of Black Lives Matter, never. To the council and staff that I work with in Waterloo Region and Wilmot Township, I am brokenhearted that I've let you down. I take my role as mayor seriously and have always welcomed and enjoyed discussions with all residents and staff and deeply regret doing anything to negatively affect those significant relationships. To redeem myself and to show that actions speak louder than words, I will work hard to be a part of the movement to create a new platform for change. I know too that freedom of speech is a right and also a serious responsibility. I accept full responsibility for what I've done. I don't expect forgiveness based on my words alone. I will show you that I am serious and that you Tell me to continue fighting hard for everyone. Again, I'm very sorry. We have several delegations. And the first uh, delegation is Mr. Rory Farnan. Welcome, Mr. Farnan. Good morning. My name is Rory Farnan. I am a resident of uh, Mannheim and I am delegating as a resident of Wilmont Township, not by affiliation, group, party or name. In fact, I'm with you today as a citizen who voted for Les Armstrong in last municipal election. It brings me no joy delivering this statement to you today. I'd like to start with an excerpt from the New Hamburg Independent on June 21st, following the pouring of red paint on Sir John A's statue outside of Castle Kilbride. The thing that bothers me the most is people do this and don't do their fact checking, said Armstrong, adding that Sir John A. Macdonald had a circle of friends who were indigenous. Fact checking, let those words sink in for a moment. The factual history of Sir John A's past is no mystery to most. Scandal, racism, the attempted whitewashing of an entire population. 
June 22nd, the Mike Farwell Show on 570 News. Whether it's accurate or a scam, nobody knows, said Armstrong, of the White Lives Matter video shared to his Facebook profile. Posted without substance or explanation. Another view. Interesting. Did you ask any of those questions or do any investigation of the accuracy of the video before sharing it? Mayor Armstrong, no. Fact-checking, do as I say, not as I do. In the days that followed, Mayor Armstrong continued to defend himself, suggesting he was the victim, that he had done no wrong. Blame Facebook for allowing the video to exist. They're only offended because they misinterpreted me. The media frenzy growing nationally. A story of a biracial family looking to move to Wilmot was published in the record, June 23rd. I am intimidated now. I don't know if my family, my son, would be welcome in the community. The underlying message, as the mayor, as the leader of the municipality, black people are not welcome. Black people are not safe. The morning of June 23rd, it is reported in the New Hamburg Independent that the statue of Sir John A. has been covered a second time with paint due to the staff cleanup of the original pouring. In response, Sir John A. was covered with a tarp. Calls to remove it to enable community reflection appeared to be ignored. Until CTV News at 6 aired the story, suggesting Armstrong wanted the tarp to stay. Moments after that report, the tarp removed. Wednesday, June 24th, Regional Council. Black Lives Matter Warloo Region had delivered a powerful and insightful delegation. This following a large, publicized and peaceful solidarity march a few weeks prior. Outside Castle Kilbride, families and individuals surrounded the Sir John A. statue. Behind closed doors, Mayor Armstrong had decided it was time to own up in what some have called a manufactured statement of apology. Councillor Galloway, on the verge of submitting a formal complaint to the region's integrity commissioner, suggested he would need arms he would heed Armstrong's apology, suggesting self-reflection and self-interrogation. Armstrong's response that staff was working with him on something like that. Mr. Armstrong, this isn't something that is found in the recommendation of a staff report. It must come from oneself. In closing, I too will accept your apology. As humans, we all make mistakes, present company on the phone included. But with words, so too must accompany a call to action. After today's delegation, I will not make further comment on what that action should look like moving forward. The onus to do what is right falls solely on you. But I will close with this, Les. You have lost my confidence to lead as mayor, as well as my vote. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Farnan. Are there any uh, questions from council for the delegation? Seeing none, our next, uh, Delegation is Guinness Schuster Ashley. Welcome. Hello? Yes. Hello, can you, I don't know if you, can you see me? Can you hear me? I I can hear you, we can hear you. Oh. 
There we go. Okay. There we go. Yes. Uh, well, good morning. Um, my name is Gita Schuster Ashley, and I attended North Walmart Public School from grade one to grade six, after which I returned back into the KW area and I've lived here ever since. Um, I spent the past 30 years as the sole proprietor of the only children's theater school in the region. I'm a Yale University educated theater director, the wife of a highly educated African Canadian high school teacher, the mother of black children, a role model to young people, a community activist, an intersectional feminist, a local shopper, a tax paying citizen who votes. So I addressed regional council on Wednesday evening, at which time I expressed my concerns surrounding the fact that Mr. Armstrong, who currently holds the mayor's seat, had posted a White Lives Matter clip on his personal website. And at that time, I outlined the fact that Mr. Armstrong had failed to take responsibility for his actions saying, and it was quoted earlier, but I'm gonna quote it again. It wasn't my intent to offend anybody. If I did, I'm sorry. And I wish you would have ended it there, but you didn't. You went on to say that uh, you, we're only offended because uh, we misinterpreted what you wanted to say. Um, so I explained at that time that uh, I had a phone call with Mr. Armstrong on Wednesday, June 24th at around 10 a.m. in the morning, at which time I kindly asked him to step out of his leadership role. He proceeded to actively defend his racist action to me. Um, so at, on, on Wednesday evening, I also expressed a deep concern that regional council lacked 100% in cultural diversity. Um, and I expressed that the Municipalities Act was really outdated, oppressive, and uh, really uh, catered to privilege because the rules in which you operate under um, allow members to behave unethically without meaningful accountability. Uh, to which I received no response, but rather praise for managing to speak within the time limit. <laughs> so that was disappointing at best. Um, after I spoke, I stuck around to listen to Mr. Armstrong read his statement, um, which he just repeated with no alterations, which I find interesting because he, he, to quote him, he said, to redeem myself and to show that actions speak louder than words, I will work hard to be part of the platform to create new platforms for change. I will show you I am serious, end quote. And we just heard that now, I believe. Uh, he then that evening went on to apologize to council members, but he did not apologize to members of our African Canadian community to me uh, but more importantly, to the three strong, intelligent, and articulate women who spoke to council that evening on behalf of the Black Lives Matter movement. So this leads me to a rhetorical question. Uh, Mr. Armstrong, how ever did you manage to pull off being a defensive racist with sexist undertones at 10 a.m. during our phone call <laughs> and then magically become a remorseful, redeemed racist by 8.30 p.m. that night? I'd love to know, um, unless you were just acting to save your career. Now, I don't know much about local politics yet, but I do know about actors and I definitely know a bad one when I see it. And right now I'm calling your bluff. You said actions speak louder than words. So on behalf of all the people you have hurt in the region, I'm telling you that the only action you will be taking to show you're serious is to prepare your letter of resignation and serve it to our community as a sign that you are finally woke. And as you mansplain things to me during our phone call, I'm gonna womansplain something to you. Woke means you get it. Now, since the township of Wilmot, uh, I believe doesn't have a current deputy mayor, I would like to take this time to kindly ask the council to call a by-election and as soon as you receive Mr. Armstrong's resignation uh, so that you'll be able to find a new mayor that will be better able to represent the new diverse town of, of uh, Wilmot Township with all its young families that are moving into your area. I think you need a leader that will uh, be able to understand um, their paths, their journeys and, and what they're bringing to your community. So I'm gonna go off script here and speak directly to you, Mr. Armstrong. Um, since you, uh, your voice through all of this has been about viewing things through different lenses, right or wrong, I decided to give that a try. I noticed that one of your supporters had posted on your Facebook page that you've done a lot of good things for the community. So I looked at your impressive bio on the region of Waterloo website 
And I got to wondering why you are holding on so tightly to your leadership role. I mean, you're what, 71? And a perpetual civil servant, so you've got a great pension. It's not about money. So I'm just thinking, like, isn't it time you should be, you know, enjoying your golden years? Isn't it time to pass the torch to a younger, more progressive leader? I can't imagine why you wouldn't let go. And then I realized that this must be linked to your ego. So even after a, a failed kind request that you step down and then a demand publicly that you step down, I guess I'm going to have to go to this level with you. And I'm going to ask you some things. Do you really want to be known as the racist mayor? Do you really want all the hurt and controversy you've caused to shroud all the good things you've done in your career? Is this the legacy that you want to leave behind? Because remember, bad politics will always be overshadowed by, by, by good deeds, right? So I'm going to end by saying that since you're apparently a big fan of panels, upon exiting the political stage, you'll create a diversity inclusion panel of which I'm gonna to volunteer to sit on because Mr. Armstrong, I like to lead by example. And your curtain call can be removing the SJAM statue as actions really do speak louder than words, right? Thank you, Gita. Are there any questions of the delegation from council? Seeing none, thank you again. Our next uh, delegation is Lindsay Coulter. Welcome, Lindsay. Hello. Hello, Lindsay. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Um, just trying to start my video. Hi everyone, um, good morning and uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Uh, my name is Lindsay Coulter and I've lived in the region of Waterloo for 30 years, my entire life. Um, I attended Eastwood Collegiate and the University of Waterloo. I've been an active member of this community my entire life. I was Miss Oktoberfest in 2012. I produced a, start, a documentary called Startup Community which highlighted the achievements of this region. And I now own and operate a business in Uptown Waterloo. I'm here speaking as a resident of Waterloo Region, the region where Mr. Armstrong sits on council as part of his mayoral duties uh, in this township. Like many of you, I heard of Mr. Armstrong's posts on social media this week. Uh, at first I was shocked, but that shock quickly dissipated as I remembered the stories that we've heard over the past few weeks from black, indigenous and people of color in our community. Stories of white men in positions of power carelessly sharing opinions that are hurtful, damaging, and racist are far from unique, uh, but they have no place in Waterloo Region. I believe that anyone who is vehemently anti-racist would never post a video like the one Mr. Armstrong shared without actively denouncing it, never mind claiming that the perspective was interesting. Uh, the careless nature in which such a hateful video was shared displays a disregard for black lives and opens up a harmful platform for those who side with white supremacy. After seeing that Mr. Armstrong's reaction to the community's outrage was uh, basically, I'm sorry that you were offended. Um, I knew that more needed to be done. 
This is clearly a person that does not feel remorse for his actions, only for the repercussions that he faces. I listened on Wednesday as Mr. Armstrong apologized um, and he shared the same apology just now um, at the regional council meeting. Mr. Armstrong's apology fell short in many ways. Firstly, he did not apologize to the black community, the group whom he directly hurt with his sharing of the White Lives Matter video. He apologized to regional council and staff members personally, but not to the people whom he directly hurt. He mentioned in his apology that freedom of speech is a right and also a responsibility, of which uh, Mr. Armstrong, you're absolutely correct. We all have freedom of speech, however, when your words incite violence and harm against the black, indigenous and people of color, you are no longer acting as the leader that we all deserve. Your freedom of speech is impacting your constituents right to physical and psychological safety, a right which is meant to be upheld by political leaders. There's no need for anyone to play devil's advocate when it comes to anti-racism work. There is no gray area here. You either believe the BIPOC community deserves to feel safe and valued and like they matter or you do not. If you don't believe that your words have hurt, please consider this. A Black Waterloo Region resident, Michael Hendricks, has already reconsidered his decision to move his family to Wilmot Township, as he feels it may be unsafe for him and his children after seeing Mr. After seeing Mr. Armstrong's post. This is just one person who has come forward. Um, I'm sure you've seen the article in the record. Um, but imagine how many more people will be moving away or reconsidering moving into the township because of the hate that Mr. Armstrong has now incited. The greatest fault of Mr. Armstrong's apology is that his words came with no commitment to action as Gita um, has already mentioned. No promise to take a step back from his position as the leader of, township, uh, of his township and also as a voice with a vote in our regional council. His apology will suffice for some, but not for those whom he's hurt. We demand action and I am demanding it now. Some will say, well, at least he can't run again in the next election, which is true. But is it enough to let him wait out the next two years in this office? Personally, I don't think so. Over the next two years, Mr. Armstrong will be called on to vote on many decisions that really matter to this township and our region. Issues like the decision to keep or remove the Sir John A. McDonald statue is just one of the many topics that you're gonna be called on to vote on. Um, and I don't believe that you can be trusted with everyone's lives in mind when you're making these decisions. I believe the only option now for a leader that we cannot believe in nor trust is resignation. Mr. Armstrong, you may be protected by the Municipalities Act from being fired, but you have the power to do the right thing now and you can just step down. You have done too much damage now to come back from this. And at a time where the public is crying out for values driven, socially just leadership, you have fallen short. White supremacist ideologies have no place in progressive and diverse community, which is why I'm asking you today to step down and create space for leadership that is more in line with our region's values and its people. Please be an example for privileged white leaders everywhere and let them know that although you are protected by systems of oppression, you will not seek to benefit from them any longer. Thank you. Sorry, um, thank you, Lindsay. Uh, are there are there any questions from council for the delegation? Seeing none, thank you. Our next delegation is John Bailey. Welcome, John. Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for, for providing us, the community, with the platform to speak and respond to this week's events. First, may I say that I'm ashamed of myself. I'm ashamed that after just six days of dealing with a very difficult and divisive moment in our community, I'm frustrated and exhausted, both physically and emotionally. Just six days of this. And I can't imagine having to live like this, this experience every moment of my life. I'm ashamed because I have awoken every day to limitless possibilities and opportunities 
I've had very few barriers in my life. Because I'm male, because I'm white, because I identify as straight, and have the advantage of being surrounded by many of the same. I've spent my career and my life working with friends and colleagues from every ethnicity, culture, skin color, gender identity, and orientation. And it has enriched my life immeasurably. I have come to understand the incredible advantage I've had, and I've tried to learn to recognize the many mistakes I've made, and have attempted to eliminate barriers on committees, industry panels, events, and pr production collaborations wherever I can. But the work is difficult, ongoing, and limitless. To be alive in 2020 is to be present for an unprecedented shift in the global conversation. And to be deaf to it is absolutely inexcusable. <clears throat> I'm a white man living on a white man's street. I've got the bones of the red man under my feet. The highway runs through their burial grounds, past the oceans of cotton. I'm a white man looking in a black man's eyes, wishing I'd never been one of the guys who pretended not to hear another white man's joke. Oh, the times ain't forgotten. These are the words of singer-songwriter Jason Isbell. Self-reflection is a difficult and painful thing to undertake. It takes honesty, hard work, experienced counsel, and the investment of time, lots of it. I'm a taxpayer in Wilmot Township, and I have to say that every single dollar I contribute is hard fought and scarce, especially at a time when my industry and my working community have been decimated. We corporately as Wilmot Township are your employers. I'm speaking to every one of you. Projects like the Prime Minister's Walk with 22 men and one woman that must have been undertaken without public input or proper consultation that we were assured would, would yet we'd be done at zero cost to taxpayers, but have now become an expense and a liability. Why? It seems that the decisions made in the past, lacking consultation with Indigenous leaders or public input, and the continued absence of sound decision making have culminated in the events we've seen this week. The paradox Wilmot has faced this week, the invitation for the public to view the paint that defaced the Sir John A. Macdonald statue rather than shamefully cover it up. But the reluctance to again use Wilmot staff resources to clean it up has invited white supremacist hate groups to come and do it for them. A tense standoff between peaceful indigenous presence and these individuals, a police presence and threats to a counselor. Why do individuals from white supremacist hate groups feel invited here? Our mayor, after posting a video on his Facebook page with the tagline, white lives matter, and Black Lives Matter is a scam. After repeated requests over several days and a council motion to remove it, steadfastly defending posting it to the internet in the interest of having a conversation, the subsequent explanations and apologies have rung hollow with the community and has created a public relations nightmare for the township of Wilmot. At this point, it seems that Wilmot needs to bring in a crisis PR team to help manage what has become a national embarrassment. But who pays for this? Wes Armstrong, I have known you since I was a kid in this town, and I know you to be a kind, affable, and generous person. When I made mistakes, you were there. I registered my first car at your license office. I've enjoyed our conversations over the years, and although we may have disagreed on certain issues, I've never believed for one second that you were a mean or vicious person. But the events of this week have hurt me deeply. I'm very concerned that the critical thinking that one must apply, especially when holding public office, before posting something troubling or divisive on social media, seems to be absent. And it concerns me that whatever converse, conversation you were intending to have, you were absent and unapologetic for. I'm also deeply concerned that you have allowed yourself to become radicalized by information that has been designed to appeal to white privilege, 
to be divisive and to cause further pain. The giant blind spot that allowed you to post and defend this video indicates not just a singular lack of judgment, but belies a deeper and more troubling set of beliefs and has caused pain for every single person of color in this community and beyond. This kind of self-reflection and sensitivity training that you committed to at Wednesday evening's regional council meeting, the time and honesty required and the time to research resources and programs should absolutely not come out of the Wilmot budget or staff resources. This is yours to own, to undertake, and to continue to do. The incredible responsibility that now rests on Wilmot Township to prove to the world that this is not who we are is immense and will take a deep commitment from every single resident of this community. We have a responsibility to prove to the world that we are not LGBT, anti-LGBTQ. We are not anti-Indigenous. And we are not an oasis of white privilege and racism. This is not who we are, but we have to prove it. After many years of public service, I'm deeply saddened by the reality that your legacy here will be remembered only by this and that the hard work to change attitudes and remove the blinders that your privilege has enabled will take time, lots of it, but time is of the essence. And we as residents of Wilmot Township, your employer need to act quickly and decisively to repair the damage that has been caused. We are asking you to resign your position and do this very difficult and time consuming work on your own. In time, these wounds will heal and we will all move forward together. I look forward to future conversations in less troubling days ahead. I am genuinely concerned for your well being right now, and I hope and pray that we can all support you through this difficult time. For Wilmot Township councillors, I can appreciate that these are difficult days indeed. Action is needed immediately with regard to the Sir John A. Macdonald statute. It seems that the only way forward involves honest cooperation and dialogue with Indigenous leaders and the public input as to how or if the Prime Minister's walk will continue and what should be done on the path to reconciliation. If Wilmot lacks the courage after due consultation to install a large plaque telling the true history of Sir John A's legacy, then I beg you to consider removing the statue and placing it in, placing it in storage until a decision can be made. Thank you, John. Do uh, any councillors have any questions for Mr. Bailey? Seeing none, thank you again, John. So next up is Cheyenne. Have you decided to stay and, and speak? Hi. Welcome, Cheyenne. Um, I'm not sure if everybody can see and hear me. Um, so I believe there's been a clear connection drawn to um, the issue of the Sir John A. Macdonald statue and the direct call for the resignation of Mayor Les Armstrong. Um, so I feel as if it is very important at this time, especially for the sake of Mayor Les Armstrong, that I enlighten you all with a little bit of information here and now. Um, and I, I thank you for allowing me to do so. So my name is Cheyenne Thorpe and I am an indigenous woman advocate and mother of two beautiful indigenous children. I am a resident of this fantastic township having spent the last 10 years growing up and raising my own children in Hamburg. 
I have attempted to become an active member of this incredibly important movement, and I plan to continue to rally and bring light to this issue until our calls for action are not only acknowledged, but met. I am here today to explain to all of you as respectful members of council why this role is of utmost importance to me. I thank you for having me and for allowing me a platform to speak and share the sentiments of myself and others seeking representation in our township. The Sir John, Sir Johnny Macdonald, alongside many of the other prime ministers on the pathway of Kilbride Castle, are an aspect of Canadian history worth acknowledgement. Macdonald is one of the founding fathers of our great nation. We recognize as Canadians that acknowledgement is deserved for his efforts as the first prime minister. Equally as important, we owe just as much respect to the Indigenous lives lost and forever affected by the process of which this great nation was founded. We want to make sure that the historical record is complete, honest, and transparent, and that Indigenous people are respected in that retelling by honoring accurate representation and making appropriate reconciliation where need be. We also want to highlight the impact of the situation on our children and our future generations. It has become quite clear through dialogue resulting of, from the current global political climate, as well as recent local events stemming directly to Mayor, Mayor Les Armstrong's comments, that many members of our community are entirely unaware of the surrounding issues and true history of Sir Johnny Macdonald and the darker side that that very history entails. It has become clear that there is a lack of understanding of the residual intergenerational trauma and acts of terror that occurred at the very hands of our first prime minister. Worse than that, there seems to be a misunderstanding that this happened so long ago that there are no longer any living descendants of the residential school system. A statement so wildly disrespectful, offensive and inaccurate that I cannot even begin to address it all with you here now. Stating strictly for the purposes of enlightening our fellow community members and our mayor, the last residential school remained open and operational in Canada as late as 1996, a mere 24 years ago. There are members in our community who are direct descendants, grandchildren, or even children to individuals who were forced into residential schools. Residents who were never told of their heritage because they felt that they needed to hide it within the shadows for their own safety. Residents who were raised to hate themselves, where they come from, to be ashamed of their own identities, as a direct result of the overall motivation set by residential schools to remove the Indian from their victims. These residents should not be forced to relive past traumas by the sheer presence of statues on public grounds, by the sheer comments of, made by public officials. They should not be granted, they should be granted not only the basic right, but the final decision in the choice regarding whether or not to relive that trauma in a public fashion. This very clear cut reasoning is why this statue and all others of their nature need to be moved to a museum where people have the right and option to pay their respects to the founding fathers. So not only give indigenous people the dignity and respect of choosing when and where to process their history and the many atrocities that come alongside it, but also to give supporters of our founding fathers a place to reminisce and pay their respects outside of the public eye. The simple fact of the matter is, Sir John A. Macdonald, as Canada's founding prime minister, played the instrumental role in initiating, supporting, and defending the residential school system in the late 19th century, acting as superintendent general of Indian affairs. He was responsible for overseeing the establishment of residential schooling. I'm not sure exactly how much of that information you are aware of, Mayor Armstrong, but I do hope that you will take the time to educate yourself through the documents that I provided, provided by the Truth and Reconciliation Council of Canada, um, and, and take the time to educate yourself throughout that. So uh, we have to put in the forefront that all information shared here and plenty more is also Sir John A. Macdonald's legacy. These are a few simple reasons why the Sir John A. Macdonald statue is offensive to Indigenous residents of this community. Artwork placed on public grounds by our government representatives should be inclusive and at the very least, not offensive, oppressive, or reminiscent of traumatic instances for those living with our communities. In conclusion, there is a movement across the world removing, removing colonialist statues similar to the one we, host, we house here in Baden. Monuments are coming down both willingly and by force. Many city officials around the world are not waiting on community members to speak up and speak out. While many statues are being torn down by force in cities all across the world, 
Mayors and other officials are choosing to remove monuments because they know it's time, with little to no prompting at all. In North Carolina, Virginia, Kentucky, Florida, and even London, England, to name only a few, governments and local officials have opted to remove the offending statues themselves just in this past month alone. Two years ago, two colonialist statues, one in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and another in Victoria, British Columbia, were removed by city officials without prompting and without open vote from the local community. Sir John A. Macdonald memorials have, been, have even been removed from various locations within our own local community once deemed inappropriate, including the sheer plans to be installed at Kitchener's Victoria Park, as well as temporary installment at Wilfrid Laurier University. As a community, we need to choose the right side of history. Now is the time for change. Now is the time for acknowledgement, representation, and acts of reconciliation. Choose to make peace with the understanding that we are not erasing history, that we as a community are attempting to amend it and further mold it by answering these overwhelming calls to action from our community. The statement that I just read and um, vocalized to all of you was prepared by a few members of our community. Um, now I, I want to inject, inject a personal statement by saying that I've been very moved by uh, the statements of other members of delegation who were here with us today. And uh, I just want to say thank you to absolutely every one of the delegation members for making mention of the removal of the Sir John A. McDonald statue or something, anything in regards to it. And I think that this is an overwhelming issue that needs to be called upon much, much sooner than later, if not immediately. And Mayor Armstrong, I personally am calling for the resignation of your position. I personally hope that you see to it that you educate yourself in the future and that you can create a environment of respect and of of learning um, but i don't think that you should be in a position of public official to to be able to do that properly so thank you thank you cheyenne do uh, many members of council have any questions for uh, Ms. Thorpe? Seeing none, our next delegation is uh, Kristen Hahn. Welcome, Kristen. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. I'm going to keep this very brief. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, in light of current events, the township is looking very ugly on a national stage. And it's not only because of the video, but we clearly need to have a difficult conversation regarding the statue and the legacy of Sir Johnny McDonald. We are experiencing a crisis of identity. And while several of the councillors have been doing very fine and progressive work, we need a strong leader, a leader, not someone who is only now just starting to consider what it might take to catch up. Now, I, I believe that Mayor Armstrong cares deeply for this community, but he simply won't be able to get ahead of this. And it saddens me to say this, but I feel that Mayor Les Armstrong should resign. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. Any questions? Seeing none. Our next delegation is Krishna Baharan. Welcome, Krishna. Good morning. Um, just having some tec technical difficulties at the moment. There we go. Uh, excuse me, uh, through you, Miriam Zhang, um, uh, your volume is very low, if you're able to turn that up a little. Is that better? A little bit. I apologize. Is that better? 
Yes, thank you. Okay. Good morning, Your Worship. Good morning, counselors, and good morning to everyone that's viewing this platform today. I will be brief as well because the uh, previous callers as well as uh, individuals that have spoken were quite eloquent and I'm not sure if I can add much more to uh, what they've said other than as a person of color living in Dayton, I actually was not shocked by the post that the mayor had um, put on his social media uh, platform nor was I shocked at his um, lack of empathy, um, et cetera, during the past couple of weeks. I also felt that his apology, statement of apology, both Wednesday evening and uh, this morning were disingenuous. However, uh, having said all that, I believe that the only way we can move forward and to correct this wrong and to, um, as well as uh, uh, put forward the platform that uh, the mayor was talking about is for him to actually resign his position. And at that point, I believe this town can move forward and start the healing process. Thank you. Thank you, Krishna. Appreciate that. Um, any questions? Seeing none, our next delegation is uh, Nigel Gordick. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Nigel. Welcome. Thank you. Wilmot Township has been my home since 2007, and this is the only place I've lived in Canada. For most of my life, I lived in cities in England, most notably London, with a diverse population of 8.5 million. With that many people, it's easy to feel disenfranchised without any connection to your neighbors and no sense of community. That changed virtually from the moment I moved to New Hamburg 13 years ago. In the first week of me being here, Glenn Cook, a local resident and a complete stranger, it invited me to lunch at Mimi's just to say welcome. I hesitated before accepting an invitation to join the New Hamburg Board of Trades Executive in 2007 because I didn't know anyone. I didn't understand how the town worked. It was my wife Cheryl, Councillor Gordike, who convinced me that it would be the perfect way to become more engaged, meet people and become part of the community. I am so glad I listened. I've never felt a stronger connection to a place, to other people, never felt a sense of common purpose, like until I moved to, to Wilmot. There are probably just a handful of Wilmot residents who, like me, identify as a person of colour. But surprisingly, remarkably, not once have I felt like an outsider. Not once have I felt like I don't belong or doubted that I was welcome. Not until this week. Mayor Armstrong, on Sunday morning, when I saw your Facebook post that shared that vile video claiming that Black Lives Matter is a scam, I felt shock and confusion. I couldn't understand what I was looking at. I know that fake news exists, and I know that there are people who fear and oppose what the Black Lives Matter movement is trying to achieve. That's not why I was confused. It's because your name was at the top of the post. You, who I've known for over a decade, thought this was worth sharing. After a couple of hours, my mind started to make sense of what my eyes were struggling to believe. And since then, I've been alternating between, between incandescent rage and being on the verge of breaking down in tears. Why you thought sharing a White Lives Matter propaganda video would be a catalyst to bringing about positive change escapes me. Describing it as another view and interesting shows that you consider it a, a credible entry point into an urgent discussion about racism, particularly anti-black anti racism. I didn't feel capable of articulating what I was feeling until Monday when I heard your council colleagues speak up to condemn your actions and vow to be an ally in the fight for racial equality. It was my impression that you only deleted the Facebook post begrudgingly. Councillors, I salute each and every one of you for the courage of your convictions. And yet, Mayor Armstrong, you stubbornly stood firm in your belief that you had done nothing wrong and that it was the fault of those who were offended because they had misinterpreted your intent. Even as late as Wednesday morning, when you were interviewed by CBC's Craig Norris, you insisted you had done nothing wrong. 
you were interviewed by the Waterloo Region Record later the same day, and you still insisted to Joel Rubinoff that people were misreading things. But somehow, by the time of Wednesday evening's regional council meeting, you had an epiphany, and you read a statement of apology, the same one you read this morning. I'm curious to know what changed your mind in those intervening hours. By the time you apologized, it was much too late. By then, your comment that white lives matter, matter propaganda was another view and interesting had left a stench in the air for nearly four full days. And that stench attracted white supremacists who came to this township to intimidate local residents, including indigenous ones, some of whom were protesting peacefully by the statue of Sir John A. Macdonald. White supremacists now feel there's a place for them right here. Mayor Armstrong, it wasn't until I saw the photos and videos that were bravely shot by Namish Modi of The Independent, another person of color, that my anger was joined by something else, fear. This is my home and I no longer feel safe here because this is now a place where white supremacists also feel at home. And that's because you opened the door to them when you said a hateful video was simply another view and interesting. You gave that odious view legitimacy. As the chief executive of this municipality, you have a responsibility and a duty of care. You have failed in that respect. There are people of color and black people who work for the township of Wilmot and you have failed them. There are people working at the township who have black family members and your actions have made them feel less welcome here. Earlier this week, the record reported that a black man in Waterloo had decided that Wilmot would not be the place to raise his family because of your actions. He too would not feel welcome. You have failed the people you were elected to represent and may have caused irreparable harm to the reputation of this municipality. If individuals are refusing to be part of this community, what about businesses? Do they want to risk tarnishing their reputations by being indirectly associated with you or even potentially risk the safety of their employees? I don't believe that we have fully understood yet the enormity of your failure of judgment. Mayor Armstrong, Les, I don't know if your apology is sincere, but I do know that it's going to take a long time before I feel I can accept it. Thank you. Thank you, Nigel. Any questions? Again, thank you, Nigel. Our next delegation is Chris, Chris Ashley. Welcome, Chris. Okay, can we hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, so my name is Christopher Ashey. I'm a lifetime resident of Waterloo Region, born in Galt, Ontario. Grew up, attended schools here, studied history, politics at the University of Windsor, attended Teachers College in Buffalo, New York, and have continued my studies at the University of Western Ontario and right here at the University of Waterloo. I've had many opportunities to venture elsewhere, but I felt that Waterloo Region is my home. In 1997, I began my teaching career at uh, Waterloo District School Board and spent my first few years as a supply teacher at various schools in the area, one of which where I spent a great deal of time was Waterloo Oxford Secondary School. At this place, I found it very welcoming and it displayed a, quite a unique rural vibe that I wasn't expecting. Imagine teaching a gym class with a cow standing next to me in the field. During that time I was there, I found a bulletin board in the school where they were working on invoking the discussion of diversity between other cultures. I had a conversation with the vice principal who then asked me if what they were doing was the right thing. It was. And I was really impressed by the steps that was being taken at that time. It was a positive step for the school community and I believe that it was a sentiment that was shared throughout the wider community. Over the years, I have spent time in Wilmot Township, New Hamburg and Baden, and grew to love this corner of the Waterloo region. I did not have any misgivings about the opinions and attitudes of that community when I attended the fairs, the derbies, the concerts and the dramatic plays, and also using local business and restaurants in that area. Unfortunately, after these past week's events, that has always, that's been erased. Again, as a history civics teacher at KCI in Kitchener and a leader of my African Heritage Club, where all students of all colors are welcome, we stress the importance of awareness, empowerment, and education. 
As has been experienced, a great deal of digital media circulated the sparks, a great deal of conversation posts that are both educational and unfortunately there are a lot of falsehoods and opportunistic events that people post. We implore our students at our schools to practice good digital citizenship because anything that they post on their social media feeds tends to follow them and a lot of them are seeing the repercussions of that and again in this situation. The post of Les Armstrong falls to this question. Guidelines of digital, digital, sorry, digital citizenship can be found on our board website and I implore everybody to review them. In my history class and civics lessons, I have also stressed to students that our elected officials carry the hopes and beliefs and attitudes of the community. Discovering something like this really sank my heart again as a teacher. Elected officials need to be aware that their actions will come with a great deal of scrutiny. As an African Canadian taxpayer, resident and constituent, born and raised again in this community, when I see something like this, it sends a very specific and confusing message. Is Mr. Armstrong for or against the video? He failed to address that when posting it. When we look at the mayor's resume in public service, I assume that he has a great passion to work for the people of the community. The fact that he is in this current position of leadership, I would expect that he would embrace a more global viewpoint and would seek to educate people. The fact that he didn't do this really frames it negatively. In closing, I would expect the mayor, council and regional council will take this incident very seriously and actually put a time frame on advancement of action rather than more discussion. This will serve to heal and stamp out the many examples of systematic racism and direct racism that are evident today. I want to leave my conversation with um, a post that I've seen that discusses a Black Lives Matter issue. We said Black Lives Matter. We never said only Black Lives Matter. We know all lives matter. We just need you to help with the Black Lives Matter for Black lives are in danger. I want to be a part of this community my friend Michael Hendricks, who was commenting in the paper, really feels slighted because he was very much looking forward to moving his family to the community of uh, New Hamburg or Baden. But the actions here really speak to what people will decide further. Les, I really hope you take it into consideration what people are asking you to do here and make a positive step. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Any questions for Chris? Seeing none, thanks again, Chris. Appreciate it. So there are no uh, further delegations. So at this point, I'll ask councillors if they wish to comment. Councillor Fanning. To you, Mayor Armstrong. Having heard all of these delegations, I would like to know if you have any further thoughts you'd like to share with us this morning. I have uh, a, st <clears throat> a statement I prepared. I've been I've given this considerable thought, and I'm choosing not to resign. Instead, I am determined to show you through my actions that sincerity of my po apology is genuine, that I can learn to do better, and that I can make amends to the people that I have hurt. That is my statement on the request for my resignation. Councillor Hallman. This is not my vote. The role and the responsibility of us as elected officials is to represent every citizen in our community. 
to represent our constituent concerns and dreams without prejudice. For many years, our local service clubs, churches, and community organizations have helped build role models. They are the heart and soul of our community. Recently, these efforts have been tarnished and devalued. We are duty bound to listen to various opinions and then through exhaustive research, determine a course of action with the greatest benefit to the community, fiscally and morally. I acknowledge your words, but your statement did not include action. Describe how you will independently research and learn how to dismantle your white privilege, civic and gender privilege, and then own it. We all must be able to research and reason to act and execute our duties on behalf of those who've entrusted us to represent their interests and their visions, not ours. The marginalized community of Wilmot and Waterloo Region have expressed that they do not feel safe. And that rests on the shoulders of us on this side of the horseshoe. I expect action. Not all lives have mattered, and our community does not feel safe. In conclusion, my family is my heart and soul, and by extension, this community is my family. And our family is grieving. Thank you. Councilor Gerber. Yes, thank you. Through you, uh, Mayor Armstrong. I think it's important for council to acknowledge um, everything that we've heard today, um, the feedback we have received through our own communication channels and, and from the community. I wanna personally thank Rory and Gita and Lindsay and John, Cheyenne, Kristen, Krishna and Nigel and Chris for sharing from their lived experiences and for sharing from their perspectives. And we want to acknowledge and listen and support you and what you have shared with us uh, this morning. As you know, if you were following our last council meeting, we have all made individual statements uh, in support of the of anti racism and commitments to making sure that Wilmot is indeed a place where all members of our community, including the black indigenous and people of color community feel welcome here in Wilmot. But some of you may not have been following the story that far back. So I just think it's important to uh, to recap that uh, the township as a whole has also issued an anti racism uh, statement. And of course, um, we are to continuing to discuss that today. Um, and I think the last thing that I just wanna to add to this is of course that um, while words are powerful and words have the ability to hurt or heal, it is indeed actions that speak louder than words. One of our earlier presenters commented on um, the willingness to accept and to extend forgiveness um, in the presence of the actions that have been promised to follow that up. I think one of the things that makes forgiveness special is you can't, you know, it's it's granted to people. Um, Les didn't ask for forgiveness. And uh, he said he's not willing to accept forgiveness. He doesn't expect forgiveness based on my words alone, um, but he will show us through his actions. And obviously as members of council and as elected representatives, it will be part of our role as a team to uh, ensure that those actions are followed and that the words that have been spoken are acknowledged and heard and acted upon as a group. So thanks everyone for sharing, spending your time with us this morning. Thank you, Jim. Mr. Fisher. Uh, thank you, Mayor Armstrong. And uh, thanks for all the people that uh, spoke today. It was very moving to me. Um, also, Les, thank you for making a public apology for posting the video. Um, there has been a lot of hurt in this community from your Facebook posting, and the apology will certainly help. Uh, to me, it's not enough. Concrete and measurable steps are needed. Otherwise, they are just words. I would ask you go further than a public apology and set some specific goals to demonstrate to the public that you truly have a desire to make amends. These goals should be personal, whether it be educating yourselves on Black Lives Matters movement or sensitivity training donation to Black Lives Matters organization. This is for you to decide, but I believe it will go a long way to mending the hurt in the community. 
Thank you, Barry. Councillor Fanning. When I asked Mayor Armstrong if you had anything further, um, having listened, I was asking for a response to some of the words that were spoken this morning. Whether or not you decide to resign is entirely up to you. And that wasn't um, the question I was asking. The question I was asking is, what response do you have to all of the people who have delegated this morning? After each one, we were asked if we had questions. And I'd like to know if you have questions if you have a response, if there are things that you want to undertake. And before I, I put my microphone on mute again, I could say a lot of words. This week has been challenging and I could talk about how it has impacted me but it's not about me. It's not about any one of us sitting around the horseshoe. It's about all of the community members. It's about the world. It's about a society that we want to live in. It's about respect for other human beings. And I don't want anything I say to detract from that. And so I'm going to ask again, Mayor Armstrong, what response do you have to the people who have delegated this morning beyond your prepared statement? Well, I've stated my regret for the posting, and I'm sincere on that, and I'm sorry to those who I have hurt, and I do intend to take it upon myself to further educate and to learn. And that is all that I can say at this point, because I have to undertake that education program. That's all that I can say at this time. I can only express my sorrow for what I have created, and I will have to uh, undertake the, the process to improve our relations. Okay, is there uh, anything? Go ahead, Councillor Fenning. I believe one of the attendees has actually raised their hand and I would ask that they be allowed to speak first. May I please ask the host to promote the attendee? Thank you. Welcome back. Hi. Um, I guess um, my response to this is no, not acceptable. Um, I do not accept your position to not resign. Um, I also do not accept anything that you have said because it is clear that this is really about your ego. And at this point, you have not answered the questions of the council members that have asked you um, what you're going to do. Uh, and by ending your statement with that's all you can say at this time shows me that um, you haven't done the work and you're not going to. So I want to know, first of all, um, if taxpayers' dollars are expected to pay to educate you. Um, so I want to know where that's going to come from and how that's going to look. 
And I also want to know what you are holding on so tightly to that you feel as a 70 year old man in this position that you need to stay. Like, why don't you retire and let somebody else take leadership? Bow your head and on a high note, be the guy that took down that statue or not. I think you have to answer a little bit more. Please do. Well, I think we're uh, probably not going to resolve our conversation today because obviously you're not accepting anything that I say. And I, obviously nothing is ever going to be said that you will accept. So I, that is most unfortunate because I am sincere. Whether you want to believe it or not, I am sincere. Whatever. Well, thank you very much. Is there anything further on the agenda that we wish to uh, discuss? Excuse me. So, excuse me. Through you, Mayor Armstrong, we have two more attendees that would like to speak. Okay. Welcome back, Krishna. Good morning again. Um, I just wanted to say that Ms. Gita Schuster Ashley, if I mispronounced your name, I apologize. Um, I believe she articulated what many of us are feeling very well. Um, I actually agree with everything she has said. And I just wanted to further state that in my personal opinion, if you do not resign, the healing process cannot begin. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back, Cheyenne. Oops. Hi, thank you for having me back. Um, I would also like to pay my respects to what was just shared by um, Jita. I also apologize if I am mispronouncing your name. Uh, I think that you have been dismissive of every single one of the inquiries that have been made to you by your formal council people. Um, I think that is an absolute testament to what it is that you are doing to us as an entire community as, uh, as, as a whole. Um, I, I think that you are not only visually, but verbally exhausted with this conversation and no longer willing to take it into a constructive direction. And I think that's a detrimental way to handle things, sir. And I do hope that you will reconsider your position of resignation because as Jita so wonderfully highlighted, doing so now would be in the best interest of preserving your political legacy because we will not stop and we will continue to push for this resignation and we will continue to push for more answers to all of these questions and inquiries that you continue to dismiss and we won't be silenced. Thank you. See, we have another uh, speaker. Welcome back, John. Hello. Um, yes, my question um, to all members of council and also to budgetary staff. Um, is there provision in the township budget for um, crisis PR? And the second part to my question is, um, What, if any, budget and staff resources of Wilmot Township um, will be potentially used by Mayor Armstrong in his alleged attempt to uh, educate himself? Uh, 
I, I can answer that I will not be using any of the uh, taxpayers' dollars. And uh, another question. Um, does the Township of Wilmot have liability insurance that will cover litigation? Um, and my question is just regarding that, that there has been indication that um, there is, it appears that there will be some sort of litigation and um, does, the, does the township have insurance to cover that cost? And what would that look like on a budgetary standpoint? Well, first of all, I'll let uh, Mr. Kelly, uh, if you would answer that. Uh, I'll, thank you, Mayor Armstrong. Uh, to the delegation, first to your first question about a provision in the budget for crisis PR. Uh, spending the our, our corporate procurement bylaw does have a provision for for situations of emergency expenditures and emergency has a broad definition um, for purposes such as this having said that um, it would be up to council as a whole to make any adjustments or amendments to the existing municipal budget um, for expenditures such as that I would I'd probably defer to the clerk on your second question I'm I'm not sure discussing any matters of litigation is appropriate in in a public council meeting, but I'll, I'll defer to Ms. Middleholtz on that. Ms. Middleholtz. Thank you, through you, Mayor Armstrong. Uh, as far as litigation, I have not been made aware of anything at this point in time. Um, members of our community uh, have the option of integrity commissioner, uh, which is a, uh, a, a budget line that has been, has been approved within the, the 2020 budget. That information can be found on our website. Um, but beyond that, I haven't been made aware of any any form of litigation. And my answer to that is that any litigation that any uh, expense would I would incur that myself. Okay, thank you. Councilor Fenning. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Armstrong. I need to address the many messages that I've received from residents who were not able to delegate today. And so for the next few moments, the words are not going to be mine, but they are going to be representative of the many messages I have received. I could enumerate the calls for resignation. I could enumerate the statements of outrage, but I don't think those are useful in that none of us has the authority over each other as members of council. In response to all of the residents who have reached out to me, whatever they've said, I can say that I can answer for myself. And I will say that I will do everything I can to help heal the divisions in this community that have been brought on by this. I will do everything I can to contribute positively to the conversation going forward. And I will do everything I can to be the best ally that everyone has in this. I hope that you will all work with us as members of council and with each other as members of the community to heal and to reunite all of us and to repair our image on the national stage. And I thank you all for taking time to be engaged in your community, for expressing your care for each other it means a great deal to me. Accountability of government is something that's very important to me. I tried over the last day or so to come up with a prepared statement for today. And I realized I couldn't. 
I wanted to hear what residents would say. I wanted to listen. And in knowing that, I knew there was no way I could prepare something ahead of time that would be meaningful. So I'm speaking to you completely from my heart. And my heart is broken. When I hear from people in this community that they don't feel safe, when I feel the threat to people I hold dear, my heart is broken. But I commit to working with all of you, to changing that, to building a community where you all feel safe, respected, loved, welcomed, valued, and appreciated. And I will do everything in my power to make that happen. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Gordick. Mm, I'm having a hard time. Sorry, people. Um, I think part of my issue um, is that um, in all of the apology and all of the comments that have been made by Mayor Armstrong, um, I haven't heard you say anything yet with regards to the horrific group of individuals that are protecting the statue. Um, there's been no denouncement. There's been no comment. Uh, you have not, I have not seen you uh, through either social media or anything else, go out there and have them removed. Um, you have not denounced their behavior and you have allowed them to come here. Um, and so I'm, 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 I'm angry and I am upset that with all of the apology that there has been nothing said with those vile individuals that have shown up in our township. Um, I, I am at a loss. Um, it's been very hard. I, I can't speak anymore, I'm sorry. Well, as to that statement, unfortunately, I did not invite those people to come out here. I did not sanction those people to come out here. And I cannot tell them they cannot come out here, as we cannot tell anybody that they cannot come out and express their opinion. I firmly believe that we do have the right to speak. But unfortunately, sometimes we don't, and quite often we don't agree with what we hear. But I, I'm, I'm, like I said, it's unfortunate that we don't have the power to do that. And those are part of the freedoms that we have in this country that you can come out and express yourself. And the only time that we can stop it is if it goes beyond just the speech. And we, I certainly hope it will not, but if it does, then we will have actions taken to put a stop to that. Councilor Gordick, do you still wish to speak or? Okay. Councillor Hallman. With all due respect, you have the ability to use your words to state where your allegiance lies. I would never at any time sanction anybody to be detrimental, but I cannot, I cannot stop them from saying it. And, and I, can, I would never agree with that. I would never condone those kind of actions. And I, I do not condone 
their their actions or their speech. I would never do that. Councilor Gordick. If you need a couple more minutes, Councilor Gordick, that's fine. Oh, uh, Council, um, Mr. Weddington wishes to speak. Thank you, Mayor. You can hear me? Yes. Thank you. On behalf of staff, I wish to provide a comment. The mayor has met with senior management team and apologized. It was received. That statement, his statement, has been sent to staff. As you are aware, on behalf of the senior management team, a memo was prepared, entitled, Racism Has No Place in Wilmot. That was very strongly endorsed by the members of council and was issued to all staff and to the public through the media. It reminds all of us, it is, and is a very strong reminder, that a council member's negative actions can have an impact on all residents, the township and their staff. Thank you, Mr. Wedekin. So, Councillor Gordick, are you uh, able to continue? See, there are more attendees who wish to speak. There is, excuse me, uh, through you, Mayor Armstrong, I believe that Council Gordick may be having some technical issues, and we do have three attendees that would like to speak. Perhaps we could. Is that better? Oh, there, oh, there she is. Now? There we go. Sorry, guys. Yeah. So, um, I'd like to raise a motion, although it's not formally written. It's just that it's come to me through this, and I'm going to just stay off camera just so I can hold my composure. So, my apologies to the attendees. Um, so, notwithstanding uh, the Mayor's apology, Today, the mayor's actions do not reflect the values of me, uh, nor do I believe of this council or the township. And I formally denounce um, his actions with regards to Facebook. And I direct that he formally report a progress report on his education and actions related to this matter to council each quarter. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'd, I'd, like, I'd like to, through you, Mayor Armstrong, sorry, uh, everyone. Um, Councillor Gordick, if I may, uh, for clarification, you are wanting council to suspend some procedural aspects of this and vote on this motion tonight, or are you introducing that as a notice of motion today? Um, for today, please, Ms. Middleholtz, thank you. Okay. So, if, if I may, Council, what's what is before you then is a, is a suspension of procedural rules, and then the motion, uh, uh, Councillor Cordick, uh, and then I would kindly ask for to forward that that motion to us in writing. Thank you. So we need uh, a motion to suspend the proce procedural portion of the bylaw, and that is moved by. Councilor Fanning, seconded by Councilor Fisher. All those in favor? That is carried. So the motion before you is moved by Councilor Gordick, seconded by Councilor Fanning, all in favor? 
Any opposed? None. That is passed. So this time we'll hear from some of the uh, attendees. Thank you, get up. You are uh, still muted. Is that, can you hear me now? Yes. Um, my name is Gita. Gita, sorry. Um, I, I'm gonna disagree. Um, you 100% um, invited. Uh, white supremacists into your community, um, not so much by the action of your posting of that clip, but your behavior afterwards to justify why you posted that clip, which was unacceptable, and we all know it. The fact that you're not getting it is what is is baffling to me. Um, and so let's make it clear, you 100% invited those people into your community. Um, and let's make something else clear, you 100% have the power to remove those people from your community. Hate speech is not welcome. Uh, behavior like that is not welcome in a community, which clearly based on all the comments and all of the things that are being said here and the high emotion that's running right now, um, this is a beautiful, beautiful community and it has so much to offer um, and it is growing and it is diverse. And um, I, I just think your attitude, um, I'm not even sure how to even categorize it, um, is, is, is doesn't match with what all these other council people are saying and what your community is telling you. And it is again, for that reason, I am going to publicly ask you, uh, no, I'm gonna tell you because I've asked you, I've, I've gone to regional council, I've spoken again today and I'm gonna do it again. Please step down, prepare your letter of resignation step down, let somebody who is younger, who has got a better perspective on what's happening in your community, let someone else come in and lead um, because you, you're out of touch and you're, you're just still not getting it. And the more you actually talk, you are digging yourself into a deeper hole. And if you could stop for one second and look around, you've brought people to tears. How, how do you even like, how do you, how do you sleep? <laughs> how do you sleep at night? So please, please step down, step down. Your time is done. It's a new era. It's, this is 2020. It's new Wilmot. Step down. Thank you. Next. Cheyenne. Hi. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak again. Uh, I am going to try to make these my final comments. But um, I thank I thank everyone for making mention of the uh, white supremacists who made themselves present um, and have been making themselves present across our community. Um, these were individuals that I personally faced, that I stood less than two feet away from, being screamed obscenities at, being screamed hate speech at, and being told to go back to where we come from and, and other things of that nature. And as much as you want to sit there and shake your head, Mayor Armstrong, your comments, your overall underlying statements they speak many more volumes than I think that you ever could. And this is something that I hold personally dear to me because my well-being was put at risk. My well-being was affected and continues to be affected as a, res a result of the residual trauma that that interaction brought. And the fact that you are not willing to publicly denounce these people, the fact that you are not willing to take action against these individuals in your community, the fact that you are not willing to do anything that 
dismiss any and all inquiries or anything that you could possibly do is disturbingly appalling to me. And I make this statement coming from an emotional place, and I hope that can be noted before council that I really normally try and keep my high emotions out of my discussion when putting it forth, but uh, I am appalled. I am appalled by the last 10 minutes of interaction. I am appalled by all, all deferrals of any sort of accountability that you could have thought to make. And um, I, again, am absolutely requesting, if not downright begging for your formal resignation and for you to step down, sir, and for you allow a more enlightened, communicative individual to be able to lead our community. Thank you. Thank you. John. I have to say, I'm actually, I, I'm still actually laughing, actually laughing at the premise that an identified hate group, an identified hate group came here and was screaming obscenities and telling an indigenous person to go back where they come from. I mean, I, that is unbelievable to me. I also want to make a point that I, I, I hope you understand, Mayor Armstrong, that this, this meeting right now is being recorded and it will exist as a record of this community action today. And I hope that years from now, when you go back and look at this, you will be able to recognize how absolutely tone deaf, racially biased, and completely unfeeling that you seem to be today. I'm, I'm deeply hurt by that. And the other thing I wanna say is that I, as a male, white, straight person, existing here in Wilmot Township, I don't feel safe anymore. What does that say to you? You and your comments have divided this community and this can only escalate from here. This township has to take a position on this. This is not an issue that can go away with a commitment to go and do some personal reflection. We have a major international problem on our hand. Our community is being watched by the world today. What are we going to do? What are you going to do? Thank you. Nothing further then. The next item on our agenda is the confirmatory bylaw and the recommendation that bylaw number 20, 2021 to confirm the proceedings of council at its special meeting held on June 26, 2020 be introduced, ready for a second and third time and finally passed in open council. Moved by Councilor Gordick, Councilor Gerber, all in favor? Opposed? That is passed. Next item is German. Recommend that we do now adjourn to meet again at the call of the mayor, moved by Councilor Gordick. Councilor Fisher, all in favor? That is carried. Thank you everyone for attending today.